if you're looking to take pictures of the upcoming eclipse or any future eclipse, you need to get some practice. If you haven't done a test session for the upcoming solar eclipse, I would encourage you to do so, and there's still time. And in this video, I'll show you what I did, how I tested everything, and what I learned. I'll also show you two quick tips if you're using Set and C for your eclipse photography. The first one is how to use the live view functionality while Set and C is running and imaging to refocus the sun if you have to, or to recenter the sun if it has drifted. The second thing I'll show you is how you can use Canon EOS Utility to download your images from your camera onto your computer mid-session uh, without interruption. So let's see what my testing setup looked like. As you can see, I'm in my basement. Ignore the mess around the telescopes. I have four setups here. Unfortunately, I haven't seen the sun on a weekend in what seems like months, and the sun only seems to be out when I am at work. So I haven't been able to do a true test. So what I did test here is my full photography automation, including my battery life and just my overall photography workflow. So my first setup here is my AT60 ED refractor on my solar quest mount with a Canon T5i connected to my Miele 3QC mini PC with a dummy battery running set NC. If you don't use dummy batteries for your DSLRs, I would highly encourage you to look into it. I've been using these for years and they are a lifesaver and a time saver. I'll link to this one in the description below, but there should be one available for every DSLR model. So next up is my 300 millimeter lens with my Canon T2i connected to my B-Link 5 mini PC along with another dummy battery running set NC. The same mini PC is also connected to my Lunt 40 sitting on top of my CEM 40 equatorial mount set up to take short videos for a time lapse of the eclipse in hydrogen alpha. And lastly, this is my wide field setup with my Canon T2i and Samyang 14 millimeter lens connected to a separate B-Link mini PC running set NC. This is not tracking and it's only using a battery. So my test also involved testing battery life so I know when to change this during the real thing. This is also a hydrogen alpha modded T2i. If you have a modded DSLR then you don't really have to worry about the white balance if you shoot in RAW. But I plan on shooting both raw and large JPEG so that I can quickly share some of my photography after my session is done. So I need to do a custom white balance and I tested that separately and it works as expected. I'll share a quick video of how I did it in a few days. So to test this all, I remote it into all three mini PCs and set my date to April 8th, 2024 and the time to about 5 p.m. UTC time so that I had about 20 minutes before the start of the partial eclipse phase. It's hard getting all three computers to sync, so there's a discrepancy of about 10 seconds between the three computers, but that shouldn't be a problem during Eclipse Day. And that brings me to my first tip for you. Set your computer to UTC time, especially if you're using Set NC. And as I mentioned in my last video, this is not a suggestion. If you're using Set NC, this is a requirement. Otherwise, you'll miss the eclipse. And on your computer, you should also turn on Set Time Automatically because when you're connected to the internet, your computer should sync to a time server, making the eclipse timing more accurate. If you're worried about not having internet where you'll be, then turn on your computer before you leave and sync the time. This will at least give you a little bit more accuracy. And one thing I learned during my testing is that I really should put my DSLR times to UTC time as well. So once I was connected, I loaded up the same exposure table in all three setups. My GPS coordinates are the same and my imaging should be almost mostly be the same. You can find a link to the exposure table in the description below. Before you copy and paste my exposure table into yours, note that my GPS coordinates are different from yours. What that means is that the phase timings will also be different. So instead of copying and pasting, you should use this as guidance to look at where I put my X's uh, for the different exposures. So this is all an experimentation based on the research I've done and the testing that I've done. So you should use this as guidance and not something that you need to copy and paste for yourself. And one thing I learned about the exposure table is that if you're using a lens or telescope where you cannot adjust the f-stop automatically through software, like my Samyang 14 millimeter lens here, then you need to leave the f-stop column blank on your exposure table. Otherwise, there's no error, but the solar eclipse timer when you start the solar eclipse photography will just stay at zero and not move forward. And once you start your session, you'll very quickly notice when nothing is moving. So I think this is a bug, but it's very easily worked around. And you also wanna make sure that your camera is in manual mode and not anything else, otherwise it won't work. And besides my Samyang 14 millimeter, I also have my AT60, which is an F6 refractor, and that's static, I can't change it. So for those two exposure tables, I need to leave the f-stop blank. Another tip I can give you is to save time and space, you can shoot in RAW only. So this is a tip from Chris from the Fort Worth Astronomical Society, and it's a great tip. And I did some testing, and the difference in time saved between shooting RAW and RAW large JPEG is pretty minuscule during the partial phases, and that's because there's just so much time for your camera to save the images. But 
when I do the same test during the Bailey speeds and totality loop, I noticed that there was maybe between five and 10 seconds of time saved just because my camera had to buffer less when it was just saving one raw file instead of one raw and one large JPEG file. But if you still wanna shoot in JPEG, one tip that I can give you that I may follow myself is shoot the partial phases in raw plus JPEG large because saving and buffering won't be as much of an issue. But during Bailey speeds and totality, switch all of your exposure types to just raw and save yourself some time. And I'm shooting everything at ISO 200. It's a little bit noisier than ISO 100, but in 2017, I shot at ISO 200 and I got good results. And my testing from this year also has yielded good results. So if you can, if you have some sun, test your camera out and your lens out at different exposures at different ISO settings and see what you like. And check out my earlier video where I showed you how you can use Javier Jubia's exposure calculator to figure out what exposure time you may want to use. Just don't shoot on ISO auto. Uh, I may or may not have done that during one of my test sessions. So really quick look at my LUNT40 hydrogen alpha setup. If I have good enough internet in Marble Falls, I plan on live streaming the Eclipse in Hydrogen Alpha. It should look cool. The only downside is that during totality, we're gonna end up seeing nothing because the sun will just be blocked completely. And the Corona does not shine in Hydrogen Alpha at all. And unless there are large prominences around the limb, we don't expect to see anything. So in my setup here, I take short 500 frame videos, stack them, colorize them, and then hopefully I'll have a nice time lapse. It's not my top priority, so we'll see. And as I mentioned earlier, I also wanted to do a battery test. So first, my mounts will all be running off a couple of these Jackery power tanks. I've been using this one for years and it's still going strong. And I bought a second one last summer and I plan on using that as well. My mounts don't use a lot of power and I confirmed that these power tanks can power them for hours. And I may also plug in my dummy batteries into the USB slots here. So my second battery test is for my Canon T2i's Canon battery pack here. From my nighttime astrophotography experience with this camera and these batteries, I expected this to last two hours and at most three hours. So I expected it to die at one point uh, and then I can note down how long it lasted. But unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess, that never happened. And it ran through the entire session and the battery indicator on my Canon T2i just said full battery the whole time. And I let it run for another hour with the LCD on, just taking random pictures that I just set up through ZNC. And it just never died, so I just ended the session. And I think the differences or the, the explanation that I have is that this battery liked the environment that it was in this time, which is in my basement, my nice 66 degree temperature Fahrenheit temperature controlled basement. So it liked that. Usually when I'm outside, it's either too hot or too cold. So it tends to die faster. So I'm calling this test a fail because I don't expect this to last as long in the Texas sun. So I plan on switching this out for another battery pack, maybe 20 or 30 minutes before totality, just so I don't have to worry about it. Even if the battery indicator says it's fully charged. Right, so that was all about my testing and I'm pretty happy with the results. Even though it wasn't a true test, I feel confident, I feel more confident in knowing that I'll be more prepared when the time comes to take images of the eclipse. If you're planning on imaging the eclipse, I do encourage you to do some kind of test. Even if you can't do a full test, test your automation or test your mounts or test your solar filter to make sure that it works for you. And I'm also hoping for clear skies on April 7th, the day before the eclipse, that I can do a kind of a true test on site. And it's also my mom's birthday. So whether or not, you know, my testing goes successfully on the 7th, I'm still having cake. Do they have cake in Texas? So I promised you two tips that I'll share with set and see that you can do mid session. The first one is to help you check your focus or to check to make sure that the sun is still centered in view. And as we all know, it's a little bit difficult to track the sun all the time. And unless you have a solar tracker like my Solar Quest or the, the high node solar tracker $700 thing that I, I've never used, but it does exist, it's really hard tracking the sun. So I did some testing and I'm gonna show you here how you can manipulate your exposure table mid session to turn on live view mode on Canon US Utility to picture the sun to make sure it's still in focus and to make sure that it's in view and correct it if it's not, if it's drifted away. If you're taking your partial images in three to nine minute intervals, this will be super easy for you. I did it in one minute, so it was a little bit more difficult for me. So hopefully what's difficult for me is easy for you. So let's take a look. Next shot is 1911. So it's this one. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these three. I'm going to delete them. So that way I'm buying myself three minutes of time. I let this one finish. And then once that finishes, I will turn on, I'll disconnect camera, turn on US utility and then do a live view of the look. For me right now, it'll look black because I'm not looking at anything, but there we go. So now I have four minutes. So now I can disconnect camera, EOS utility. And now I can do camera settings, live view shoot here. And there we go. So now I have a live view of the camera. And now assuming that we were looking at the sun, the sun will be here. And then this is connected to my AZ GTI. So I can turn up, pick, take out my phone and then move it to center the sun if I need to do that. Okay, anyway, so we can see this here and we can, we can make changes. Uh, and then once we're done, we can close this, reconnect the camera and then continue, be on our way. Let's not close that here. Close this this I'll close this and then now I can go back to here click connect camera and there we go not connected so I still have a two minute wait time so it's fine so you should use the partial phase images times to uh, check your settings you can also turn on the live view on your camera directly if you want but if you don't want to touch it just come here delete a couple of these rows like this give yourself some time, especially if you're shooting at one minute. If you're shooting at three minutes or five minutes, you can probably do them between each shots anyway. Um, and then, yeah, that should, that should be the way to do things. So the second method that I'm going to show you is how to download pictures from your camera onto your computer using Canon EOS Utility while set NC is running. It's a similar process, and if you're doing three to nine minute intervals, again, it'll be super easy for you, but I'm doing one minute intervals, and I'll show you just how I fumble around with it, but it works, and it should work for you as well, so let's take a look. All right, taking a break from all of that, I just wanna show you how EOS Utility can help you here. So I am going to let the next run finish because the other one will start in 20 seconds. So once that happens, I will disconnect the camera, turn on EOS Utility, download some of the images. I don't think I'll be able to download all of them, and then we'll start back up. So now I can disconnect camera, EOS Utility. Alrighty, start to download images. So it's going to try and download all of them real fast. I'm just gonna close the preview. You can see there's 215 images. And once this gets to say 12 seconds, I'm going to cancel this, close this, and then reconnect camera. So it does keep counting, uh, which is great. And I think one of my other cameras is about to go off. So five, there we go. So now I'm cancel this, close this. Now I can connect camera because remember, it can only have one connection at a time. Great. So this is just a d demoing of what I will be doing at some point so that I can back up my images and also, uh, so that's good. So disconnect again, EOS utility, start. And it does continue as long as you don't change any settings. Close the preview. So if you do this sooner than what I did here, uh, you can, you can, it doesn't need to do 200 images at a time. You can wait like, you know, like do this every 15 minutes or so instead of every, uh, I think I waited almost like 45 minutes. So there's a lot of images. So in the 18 seconds, you gotta make sure you pay attention to the timing here. I'm gonna go, let it go to 10 seconds. Okay, so cancel, close this and connect camera. Oh, look at that, five seconds to spare. There we go, disconnect. If you don't disconnect and turn on EOS Utility, EOS Utility will not be able to connect to your camera because the camera can only be connected to one controller at a time. But anyway, this is gonna be the last time I, last one I do on video here, and I'm not gonna download all of them. They're all just gonna be black. It doesn't really matter. Just wanna show you that you can do this. It takes a little bit of work. You can download your images. Uh, I'll probably do that with my uh, 300 millimeter lens so that I can share it on a live stream if I am able to live stream. So we have 15 seconds and then cancel that, 
close and connect camera. And there we go. Now, if I go to my pictures, there we go. This is the folder. So here is all of the images. I'm going to turn on options, view, uh, hide, don't hide extensions, right? So that I can see that there's CR2 and JPEG and there are 140 of them. So like 70 images. Okay, cool. The anxiety levels in this hemisphere is going to skyrocket for the next week and a half, especially when we start seeing forecasts come in. If you have a favorite tool or website that you use for weather forecasts, let me know in the comments below. I'm planning on doing a quick live stream on the night of April 1st, uh, where I'll just look at the forecast around the country and see what it looks like with a note that we know that it won't be fully accurate. We're still a week away, but we're leaving very early on the third. And I think the end night of the first is my last opportunity before we leave for a road trip. It'll be a really quick live stream. So I hope you'll join me for that. And if you have resources that you want to share with me, let me know. I hope this video was helpful. And if you have any questions about any of your setup, any of your automation, imaging, etc., let me know in the comments below. It doesn't have to be set NC specific. I have been doing a ton of research on it. I've been trying to help as many people as possible. And if you haven't joined our Discord server yet, I encourage you to do so. There are a couple dozen people there who are looking to both observe and photograph the upcoming solar eclipse. So there's been a little bit of a collaboration with a lot of people and it's been really helpful. I wish everyone clear skies. Come on, weather.